Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to a quick little August reading wrap up. Um, I wanted to get this filmed before I go back to, well not go back to, but start my new job which begins tomorrow. So I'm filming this a day early and I'm sorry the lighting is a little bit wonky. Like, ugh, lately the it's just been annoying to me but we're gonna go ahead and do this um, the way that I always do if you're new here because that happens well welcome um, I actually don't go over every book I've read in my monthly wrap-ups I actually don't even do bi-monthly wrap-ups anymore because I read too much I have weekly reading wrap-ups though and I will link the playlist up here this is a list of every single book that I've read I mean if you watch the playlist from the beginning of the year until now and then I do these monthly wrap-ups where I will just go over my reading stats and then talk about the top five six whatever books that I've read this month so we're gonna go ahead and dive into this I try to keep these videos a little bit quicker just to kind of let you know what's been happening in the book refuge realm a few super awesome things that happened this month we had some um, more author interviews um, I've had both Maggie Cole well more than both I've had Maggie Cole um, Sophie Lark came back and we just had Pam Godwin all on the channel. I believe it was, everyone was in August. Maggie Cole might have been right at the end of July, but it, that has been so amazing and I have felt so blessed to have these authors stop by and chat a little bit about their process and their books and I hope to do many more of those. Um, so far I still have Jana Darling, um, coming up. She will be here, um, next week. Um, which is absolutely thrilling. I really enjoy her writing. I'm equally frustrated by some of it, but I also love some of it a whole lot. So that's going to be fun. Um, also, I recently made a trip to Utah to visit my book big sis and wonderful friend Crystal. You will be still seeing some content coming from the both of us when we were together and it was absolutely wonderful. And yeah, I finished off my job that I was currently in and I'll be starting a new one. So those are kind of the life updates that have been going on. Um, I will still be in the same role, which will be executive and administrative assistant. Um, it'll just be for a new company that is not based out of someone's basement. So I'm very excited to get to dress up again and have fun that way. So let's go ahead and dive into the stats. Okay, so I did have um, 63 books, but three of those were DNF, so I read 60 books, which was a total of 19,071 pages, which averaged to 635 pages per day. Um, 60 books is sitting around where I've been for the last few months. I have no idea what September will look like. Um, I don't know that I will get to do much reading during the week at all if that's even going to be a thing, like during the work day, I mean, during the week, yes, once work is over. But I've thought that before and still been able to squeeze in some reading. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I did make myself quite a TBR for September. So I hope that I can live up to that anyway. The format of these books was 16 print books, 38 ebooks, 21 audiobooks, and six e-arcs. Not quite as many arcs as I usually have, but that is okay with me because writing reviews is not completely my strong suit. I more like talking about them on the channel, but there were some good ones. The subgenres of romance that I read was 20 dark romance, 18 contemporary, 6 historical, 2 fantasy, 8 paranormal, 1 mystery, and 5 other. And those other was mostly monster romance. I did try that as well as alien. I put like alien and monster like together and maybe those are supposed to fit into paranormal. I don't know. But I do know that the paranormal is mostly the um, Suzanne Wright series that I binged which I had a wonderful time with. I really love that series a lot. Um, then my ratings were, as I said, I had three DNFs. Those were kind of all in a row. I'll talk a little bit more about my reading mood in just a minute. Um, you also saw I only read six historical. That is like so strange for me. It was so weird. Um, but yeah, I had three DNFs. I had um, one two star, eight three star, four 3.5 star, 25 four star, um, nine 4.5 star, 
10 five stars and three six star. And I will say all of those six stars were re-reads. <laughs> um, now let's talk about my mood real quick here before we go into my favorite reads. So I won't be talking about the six star reads because those were all re-reads. I reread a lot of Pam Godwin, which is no surprise because she was on my channel. I reread Filthy Rich when it came out on audio and I reread Savage Tracker when it came out on audio. So those were already six star books for me. And upon reread, they stayed so. Um, also, a lot of the five star reads were rereads for me. I was going through, you know, not like, dep I was not, it wasn't depression, but it was like, I was going through a weird mood with like the ending of my job. And it's just kind of that like weird period. And so I really wanted to read a lot of comforting things. So that's what I did. You know, like I reread, oh, and Devil in Disguise too. I reread Devil in Disguise was um, another one. And that's just kind of where my attention was. It was very hard to focus on new books. And as you can tell as well, a lot of books sit at four star for me. I think this is one of the like lower rated months that I've had. Usually I have, you know, equally the same amount of five stars as I do um, four stars. And it just wasn't really happening for me this month. And I don't know why, but I've tried to explain it the best I can. I was just in a funky mood and my friends were kind of laughing at me because I was all over the place. I read more alien romance than I had before. I read some of the monster stuff. Um, I was just kind of spinning all over the place and it was strange for me because I'm usually know pretty well what I like. And so my ratings are usually higher because, because I know what I like, I don't really mess around with other things. You know, so that tends for my ratings to be skewed high because I pick what I want to read, right? But anyway, um, that's kind of the funky mood that I was in and I was just kind of banging all over the place. But let us talk about um, five of my favorite books, which again, these won't be any that were rereads. So these were five books that I read for the first time in August. Um, so let's go through those. So the first one I want to mention is Broken Wing by Judith James. This was a book that I read because of the viewer recommendation form, which I've taken a little bit of break from reading some of those because I did like, I've done 15 of them, um, in the end of July and the beginning of August. And I, lo I love doing it. I do. Um, but again, pre-mentioned the mood that I was in and I didn't want to give people's books an unfair, like, try because I was so bitchy for lack of a better term uh, but this was one I read near more near the beginning of the month and I swooned so hard oh, I should have grabbed this one because I do have a physical copy of that that I bought but it's it's in my room it's fine this is what I would call like a historical epic romance in a way like it 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 leans a little bit more towards historical fiction but the romance still is very important but also the journey that our hero goes on is given like equal oomph. So it's very hard to place it. In my heart, this is a romance because it begins with that relationship and it ends with that relationship as being the most important part. But this really is the journey of a young man named Gabriel who has been a prostitute for most of his life. And he rescues a young boy who's actually like a future duke by keeping him safe in this brothel when he gets separated from his family and he takes care of this boy for many years taking his clients for him taking his punishments for him and somehow keeping this child innocent while living in the heart of sin and defilement and when this boy's brother and sister i believe sarah and ross are the name of the brother and sister they come they finally find their little brother and they've made it there to get him sarah is a widow she had a very old husband and Ross is they're actually half brothers and they're each half siblings to the little brother if that makes sense um, and they rescue him and the little brother doesn't even remember his siblings because he has been separated from his family for so long and so he refuses to leave Gabriel behind and so Ross the older brother hires Gabriel to be a companion to the boy. And now Gabriel has obviously a very twisted view of men and aristocratic men. And he believes that he will be used for what he's been being used for. And Ross is like, no, 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 no. 
that's not what's going to happen to you. You are never going to be treated that way again. You're going to come and live with us for a year's time. And then I'm going to pay you for your services for being my brother's companion. And you can go off and do whatever you want. Well, he falls for Sarah and Sarah falls for him. And there are many misunderstandings because Gabriel doesn't exactly have a healthy representation of sex in his life. He believes that he's only wanted for one thing. So he will sometimes lash out at Sarah and Sarah's very impulsive. She's very bold. She's been a widow longer than she was like married and she's had a lot of freedom. She's also um, part Romani. Yes, the slur of Gypsy is used in this book because that is what she is called. Um, it's not a huge painful part of the story but if you're sensitive to it just want to put that out there um so she's already looked at as a bit of an oddball um and so she's afforded a lot of like freedoms that other like women would not have and that's a bit much for gabriel at times who has been mistreated and abused by both men and women and she just thinks he's beautiful and fascinating and she just wants to get to know him and he, you know, misinterprets that a lot of times. So, oh, this book was gut-wrenching and beautiful. And the only reason this one wasn't a six star for me is because it was more of like an epic historical romance. Like I said, there's a part of this book where we are very focused on the hero's journey and some things like that. So yes, trigger warnings for assault and rape and forced prostitution and abuse and all those ugly, painful things. But I highly recommend this book. Um, thank you so much to the viewer who recommended it. I didn't write that down who did it. I think this one might have been anonymous. No, no. It was from Chris Christy J, I think is who recommended it. I'm so sorry if I'm wrong, but I loved it. The Bastard's Betrayal by Katie Robert. This is the first book in her scandalous Skyons uh, quad. It's going to be four books that is about the children of uh, Dimitri and Kira uh, Romanoff and it's the next generation of the O'Malley's like part one so she's planning I think to do three series about the children so this one is about the uh, Romanoff O'Malley's and the first book is about Rose who is the oldest daughter and she has been having a fling with someone she finds out is actually the son of an enemy and so in the first chapter of this book she finds out who he is she is horrified that he has been using her and she shoots him and then she leaves and engages herself like gets engaged to a different man and um dimitri's not gonna put up wait not dimitri Dim dimitri is her dad's name right I literally, Dante, wow, I'm sorry that I was probably doing that wrong. Katie, why did you name people's names so close to each other? But I'm pretty sure it's Dante and Rose. Yes, so sorry for saying Dimitri for part of this. Um, so yeah, this ends up being a captor captive, um, kidnapping as love language, as Katie likes to say, and he wants her to marry him and not that other guy, um, but that would cause her family to kind of be in an embarrassing situation. Um, after already having been made a fool of for her secretly dating this guy, there's just a lot. I loved this. This was very nostalgic for me. I recently finished the O'Malley series. Um, I had started it a couple years ago and when I knew she was going to do this second generation, I finished it. So I love seeing the O'Malley's as parents and aunts and uncles and I can't wait for there to be even more. I I really enjoyed this. I am I'm also a Katie Roberts stan. We know this. It is documented. So this was five stars for me and I don't care. I loved it. I read The Dawn by Serena Ackroyd just recently. The second one in this duet will be coming soon. This fits in with her Five Points Mob, mob series. Um, you can read this duet as a standalone. This one's just the first one, as I said. Um, it's the Oath du duet, part of the Valen Valentini family. Like, seriously, she has so many titles going on with these, whatever. But this one is about our hero, Lucio, and our heroine, Jennifer, who is the friend of one, our one of our previous heroines. But she is a gold digger. She is the daughter of a prostitute who has made herself basically a high-class prostitute. Um, she keeps herself very aloof. She likes lots of shiny things. And when her and Lucio, Lucio um, meet each other, he immediately wants her and she wants his money. And then 
he wants her on a completely different level that she's not sure she's ready to hand over to someone and we'll have to see how it goes but I I loved this I love this as a first half I can't wait for the lady which comes out in just a couple days and I love Serena Aykroyd's books when she writes mafia I don't love her MC books I really really don't but I love her mafia books and this one was amazing I just last night where'd I put it read The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. Actually, these like three last books I'm talking about, I read them all within the last 48 hours. This book just came out slash is coming out. I have been waiting for this book for a very long time. Helen Huang had a loss in her family and so she took a year off of writing. So this that is now the reason we know this book got pushed. This book is devastating. Okay, this book is devastating and raw and full of pain. And there's no nice way I can say that to you. This is about tear caretaking of a loved one who is dying and the death of said loved one. So it's out there. It is also about our heroine discovering that she's neurodivergent. It's also about a hero who has previously had cancer and is dealing with um, discovering what kind of man he is now. Um, and this is more women's fiction than romance. I will tell you that the full arc of this is about our heroine's arc. It is not their romantic arc. Okay, our hero is amazing. He's wonderful. Their relationship is beautiful. There's a discussion of like not orgasming every time and very much consent, especially when we have a heroine who says yes all the time. Like she's not very good at saying no, but we have a hero who's very perspective and is like, okay, are you just agreeing with me because you don't want to say no? Or are you actually into what's happening? Like beautiful discussions. But the actual arc of this story is about our heroine and her mental health and her relationship with her family and dealing with guilt about not wanting to be a caretaker and not wanting to watch your loved one suffer. It's ugly guys, it's ugly, but it was also so beautiful and I cried more than I didn't when I read this. So this is absolutely a five star. It's not a six star because it hurt so much. Like it physically was hurting me. I had a migraine when I was done reading this book I know I'm really advocating why you should read this, but I'm actually telling you why you shouldn't if you don't think you could handle it, okay? Because this is not pleasant. I didn't end it feeling super hopeful, even though it was beautiful and it has an HEA, like there is an HEA in this. I was finished and I was broken when I was done. So please don't fall into the hype of this book just because like honestly think if you want to go through this journey because Helen Wong will grab you and hold you in it she has such a way with words but just be wise like don't just fall into the hype for this one because it will hurt you and I'm honestly want you to be careful of your mental health and I say that with such love okay like I have friends of mine that I've told them what's happening in this book and I was like I swear to god don't read this like don't so but I gave it five stars. <laughs> I just am being honest with you. Don't torture yourself needlessly. And then the last one I want to talk about, I just finished and I was waiting to finish it before I filmed this because I knew it was going to be on my list. And that's Kingly Bitten by Lexi C. Foss. Yes, it's finally here. This book was postponed two or three times. I know the author was going through some stuff. I'm not upset about it. In fact, I'm glad she took her time because I fucking love this book. It's hard not to spoil this. This is book five in the Blood Alliance. This is about King Jace, who has just recently become king because of things that have happened. And our heroine, her name is uh, Kalina. And I don't want to say who she is or where she comes from because that's a big spoiler. But this is the two of them like him kind of coercing her into helping with a certain situation and then realizing that they are more closely bonded than we expected them to be. If I could say that. This one, I absolutely loved it. It's not my favorite one in the series probably. Uh, that probably is still regally bitten, but it is five stars and I really enjoyed it. And I love this series so much. There's now five books out. She announced what the sixth one is, and the sixth one doesn't come out until next year. <laughs> Ugh. And it just hurts me so much, but I'm willing to wait for it because this series is awesome. So there you go. There's kind of my quick overview of the month of August. I can't wait to see what September brings us. Um, I hope it brings some cooler damn weather because I am sick of the heat that's been happening in Fargo. 
Oofda, I was gone for vacation and it was cool while I was gone and now I'm back and it's heating up again. And I'm like, damn it, damn it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.